Yo guys, the video's gonna start in a second, um, but before it does, I just wanna let everyone know, I just dropped a new sample pack on my band camp, the link is here, um, it's also in the description, so you can just get it there, um, but yeah, House Music Volume 3, um, the first two did very well, and to go with this video, I wanted to go ahead and put out House Music Volume 3, just like the other ones, it's got a ton of loops, a ton of samples, like one shots, um, a ton of effects, everything you could possibly need, basically. To either get started if you're just completely at ground zero, never produced before, or to get some new sounds if you're like a more seasoned producer and you're just looking for something new to work with. Um, so yeah, it's only five dollars as well. Um, so you can't really go wrong. Um, but yeah, you can cop that in the description. And here's the video. Thank you so much. Okay, hey guys. Um, if you've clicked on this video, you kind of already know what we're gonna be doing. Um, I'm gonna be making a house track today from almost completely from scratch. I'm only going to be starting with this, um, this operator ar arpeggio thing that I made. Um, and obviously some samples. I'm not just going to completely synthesize everything with Serum or anything like that. But, hopefully this can help some of you guys who have been requesting a video like this to sort of see the process and see where, um, yeah, sort of like give you a place to start from if you're new or if you're just looking for like a new idea for, um, sort of, I guess, uh, making music. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to start out here. So we have this operator thing. Um, I'm going to start here and make a kick, actually, because a kick and bass are obviously sort of like the foundations of house music or whatever. Um, and just in general, dance music. So I like to get at least the kick right off the bat. Um, and I'm using this one that I've made. But I don't really like the high end for this, so I'm just using it for the low end. And we're going to make our own kick using this one as the high end, and, or as the low end. And I'm going to find one for the high end. Real quick. Um, let's use this one. Um, so yeah. Um, hopefully this can sort of give you guys some ideas or something. I might give away this project file, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but let's actually consolidate this one with the fade, because sometimes when I copy over fades, I find it doesn't always work properly. Um, so we're going to just duplicate that a ton of times. And we will call this one low kick, and the next one high kick. Um, okay, great. So, let's get a EQ on the high kick, um, and we can just go ahead and start to, uh, do this. So, the key here to making your own kicks this way, as you can see, it's not very hard. You just have to really get them, um, just make sure that they're all good as far as, like, the, um, levels. It's really just about finding the balance. And you saw right there, the transients weren't lining up. The transient being just like the thing at the very beginning of the hit, like this. Um, so I had to go ahead and just line those up real quick. And then I'll fix all of this. Um, I know some people do this in like drum racks or in like sampler or simpler groups or whatever. But for me, it's just kind of easier to just do it in the actual arrangement view. Um, it's just more visual, I guess. But... Cool, so we got a kick. So I'm probably gonna speed this up as well as like several other things, but I'm gonna find some hi hats here and put together a sort of hi hat loop and then I'll show you. Okay, cool. So um so yeah, here's the drums that we have right now. And um I'll sort of explain everything that's going on with them. So essentially what we have is, um, we have obviously the kick that I showed you, low layer, high layer, um, and then I added this clap, it's just from the Cashmere Volume 2 sample pack, didn't really do any processing to it, I just got it, like, the level, um, not really too much to say there. Then I have the sort of hi-hat percussion loop, um, and so the idea here, if you look in the MIDI, is I have, um, so essentially, we have like this whole little loop, um, and the key here is you start with the open hi hats, and then add in these little accent sounds, um, and then I have them 
on a I have a groove on here for the swing because if you listen, um, there's a little bit of swing. And usually I would go in and do it by hand, you know, just move it off of the grid a little bit. But because we have other elements such as this arpeggio going, um, that are gonna need to be swung, I didn't want to do too much of that. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make this the intro. I'll go ahead and add a locator intro. Um, and then we'll make this sort of like the breakdown. Um, and sometimes I'd do like a 32 bar intro if it was sort of like deeper, more like underground house. But for this kind of track, I'm just going to do like a, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do sort of like a 16 bar intro. That's pretty straightforward. Um, and what I'm going to do is in the first part, it's going to be like this arrangement. So essentially we're going to have, um, all that, but I'm just going to do this real quick. Okay, so essentially we're going to have eight bars where it's just the kick, the high kick, and the clap. So you get like... And you get a little bit of percussive stuff from uh, this arpeggio, which I'll explain in a second. Um, and then at the end... You get the full thing. Um, and that little percussive stuff from the arpeggio... I'll talk about the arpeggio right now. It's um it's an F sharp minor. And it's just all these notes. If you've seen my stream, uh I actually made this on the stream. Um and I started with this. I know it's not entirely a track from scratch, but it just gives me something to sort of work from. Um and all it is is it's just this operator patch. Which is these two sort of uh oscillators going off each other. They're both just sine waves. And then this third one is what gives it that sort of percussive thing. And then there's the pitch envelope. Um, just going up very quickly. Just to give it sort of more life. And then I have it distorted a little bit. With literally just the default overdrive preset. Um, so after this, I'm going to add some little embellishments for the intro. Um, I'm going to start off here and actually take a little vocal shot. Um... From this loop that I have. Let me see. It's in here somewhere. I just had to grab this one. Because these aren't all. Completely. Um, in like the. Straight in the middle stereo wise. So I wanted to grab the one that was. Um, and I'm going to put the tuner on here. Okay that's in D. So we have to put it up to F sharp to match the arpeggio. So D sharp. E. F. F sharp. Okay, so four semitones. Um, and we're just going to duplicate that a bunch of times. I'm just going to have it through the whole intro. And probably through all the other parts, too. These kinds of little, like, layers underneath it are not really talked about too often. But they can really add a lot. Okay, so yeah, now it's F sharp. Um, and I'm going to put an LFO tool on that. I'm probably going to put an LFO tool on the operator as well. Um, and the point of this LFO tool isn't for, like, I don't know. It's basically to get the side chain sound, the pumping, like that, um, without having to actually side chain it. And the reason I do that is because it just gives you a little bit more control to use LFO tool. I'm also putting the hell vintage verb on here. We're just trying to give it some atmosphere. You see, that kind of sits in the background nicely. Um, and let's put the, okay, so I copied the LFO tool from here onto there. Um, also, quick tip with LFO tool. By default, it comes like this. Um, yeah, like this. But if you listen, you may not be able to hear it super well, but you get a little click when it's like this all the way to the right. So if you move this thing over and then curve it, you can still get that, like, tight side chain without, um, yeah, without having to move it, or without having the click. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of automation on this thing. I'm just going to throw an auto filter on there. Let me see, frequency. And we're just going to have it sort of go up for, like, most of this. Like, about like that. And I'm putting it before everything else. Because if you think about the signal flow and, like, the path or whatever... You don't really want to be, like, low-pass filtering your reverb or your, like, sidechain thing. You want it to be, like, sort of the filters going into those things. Um, that's essentially what I'm doing. 
Yes, you see. It fades up. And we get a pretty cool effect this way. Cool. So I'm going to I'm not gonna focus on doing too much like effects right now and stuff. Um I usually go through and do that stuff later. Right now I'm just really focused on the track. So I know for sure I want during the breakdown to have the uh arpeggio the whole time. Um and then at the end it's gonna cut out a bar before the drop. So I just automated the LFO tool to turn off because if you were side chaining this to the kick it would it wouldn't be pumping there still. So now it's just doing that. Um and I'm gonna duplicate I'm gonna turn on the automation lock and I'll explain that in a second. Uh but I'm gonna put this vocal thing throughout the throughout the um breakdown and then the build up as well. Um okay, so the purpose of this automation lock is basically when you have it turned on, if you duplicate something, I'll show you where you can see the frequency of the filter. If you duplicate something, it won't mess up the automation, whereas if I did that without the automation lock see it does that so it's a pretty useful tool um so now we got this thing um so what we need now is some kind of like a baseline i'm thinking um and i already kind of have an idea for one actually that i'm not sure if it's gonna work but we can try um but yeah we need something like low in this part like something with the low end to to go on here so i'm gonna put in a serum and i know already i want a respace um and what a respace is is it's Two or more saw waves detuned from each other and then filtered down using a uh, low pass filter. So that's literally the sound. And the way I made it was I just put the unison up all the way on the default saw and then put on a low pass filter. And then I'm going to do some gliding, I think. So I'm going to put this mono legato on and turn the portamento up. Um, okay, so my idea for a bass line is like this. Oh, nice, it works. Okay, cool. Um, and then I'm gonna throw on... Hang on. Okay, so this is a good technique if you're doing, like, a bass line. Oftentimes, it can be hard to hear the notes when they're very low like that. So it helps to pitch them up. And just listen to it. You know. Like that. Um... Cool, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna put a little glide at the end there so it's gonna be like it'll, I'll play it in a second. Hang on. Okay, cool. Nice. I think I'm gonna put the clap in here too. Yeah. But I'm gonna put it in the build. Okay, cool. Um, so I think I kind of want to find like some vocals from a sample pack or something. So I'm gonna try and find some. And I'm gonna speed it up, and then I'll explain to you what I did after if I'm able to find any. Um, so let's see what happens. Cool. Okay, cool. So um. I got this going. Okay, so I found this one. Give it to me, baby, baby. Um, it was just in this 91 vocals, vocal hooks pack. Um, and what I did was, it's it was an A minor originally, so I pitched it down to, uh, minus three. Give it to me, baby. To put in an F sharp minor, which is what the song is in. Um, then I did a little thing at the end here, I'll show you. It goes like this. Give it to me, baby. <laughs> See, this part felt kind of empty, um, so I took her going like this, Baby. and then I pitched it down an octave and put it there, um, and we're going to process this in a second, but now I want to talk about vocal processing, because this is something that people ask about quite a bit. Um, so to start off with, what I'm going to do on these vocals is I'm going to put on a little bit of auto-tune, um, because there's some parts where they're kind of weird, and just in general... It's a cool effect, so I may as well. Um, so I'm going to start maybe with the retune speed about here. I've set it to F-sharp minor, the key of the song. 
And I've put the, all the amounts up all the way. So let's hear how that sounds. Give yeah, it to me, baby, baby. You can hear it. It's pretty auto But I like the sound of it. It's got like a cool effect. Um, and I'm gonna put it. Just copy that down to the low one as well. Um. Yeah, it to me, baby, baby. Yeah, it sounds really cool. Um, so after that, I'm gonna try. I want like the kind of like blown out over compressed EDM vocals. So I'm going to give it a shot with OTT and I think I'm gonna have to put a gate before this, but let's see. Okay, yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and cut out all these like blank parts. If you see, there's a bunch of just empty spots in the audio file. Um, and I'm also gonna do a little fade there. Um, and what this is gonna do is, if you hear when I have this in, there's like a little static, um, so d by doing this I can get rid of that, um, and yeah, it's not too hard because there's really not too much open space on this vocal sample, um, this would probably be a lot more tedious if this was like a full thing, but I'm just going for like a quick little vocal hook here, um, cool, and then I'll copy that over, um, but I think sometimes... Yeah, it's only Okay, yeah, I'm gonna put a Give it to me, baby, baby. Give it to me, baby, baby. Just give it to me. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit of gate on there. Give it to me, baby, baby. Give it to me. Just enough to keep the vocal tight without uh messing it up too much. And I'll just copy this down onto the uh the low one and just make sure. Yeah, sounds fine to me. So now it's got like that sort of I'm sure I'm probably gonna catch some uh flack for this. But um yeah, now it's got that sort of like tight sort of processed, almost like radio like sound. Let me try. Yeah, I just like that kind of like OTT. It just gives it a lot of character. Um, okay. So after this, I'm gonna do some reverb. I'm gonna put it after OTT, of course. Um, I'm gonna do a very small mix. Um, and a very sh not like a short decay. We're just gonna move it down a little bit. And I'm hearing some low end in there, too. Um. So I'm gonna cut it before, or I'll just cut it after the reverb. Actually, no, I'm gonna cut it before the reverb. Um, I'll show you. It to me, baby, baby. OTT just tends to create this. Give it to me, baby, baby. Just give it to me, baby, baby. Give it to me, but, um, baby. Give it to me. Oh, whoops. Well, um. Yeah, so like OTT tends to create a lot of low end, and multi band compression in general just sort of like really brings out any kind of low end that might have been. Give it to me, baby, in there. Um, baby. But anyway, Give so we just put a little bit of a reverb on there. I'm gonna experiment. I also put the reverb on this. I'm gonna experiment with a little bit of delay. Um, because sometimes a quarter note delay can sound good here. And what I mean by a quarter note delay is, oh, whoops, is this. So it's going like. Yeah, I like that. It sounds good. Um, let's put it on the low ones as well. I may as well just do this all as a group, but I want to be able, like, because alternatively what I could do is just group these together like this, and then put this processing chain on the group. But it's kind of easier for me to just do them separately because I know later I'm gonna want to change the low ones somehow. Um, and it's just gonna be easier to do it this way. Um, now the next thing I want to do is a little vocal effect going into this next part. And this shouldn't be too hard. I'm gonna grab a little tiny bit of this. Um, let's just take like this much. Now, you don't wanna get, you wanna get a vowel. No, 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 no. That's a little too much. Um, let's try this. Ah, almost over a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, cool. That works fine. Um, so essentially, what we want to do is we're gonna put a bunch of reverb on this. You may have heard of this before if you're kind of a beginner. You probably have, but this is a really good thing that you can do to make your tracks maybe a little bit more professional. So we're gonna put a real long reverb on that. Um, with fully 100% wet mix. Okay, that sounds about right to me. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna freeze this track, and then we're gonna flatten it. Um, cool. So you see what happens is Ableton. This is the cool thing about Ableton. It you don't just export this out, so it separates these two. This is entirely the reverb tail, and this is the thing you just started with. So we can just delete that, and then line this reverb tail up pretty nicely like that. Uh, we gotta reverse it first. Whoops. Okay. So reverse it. <laughs> And then line it up. Um, and what that can do, or what that does, is basically you get like this sweeping into the vocals effect. It's used a lot actually in like old like trance and stuff, funny enough. Um, but it's really cool. It's like one of those things that isn't a lot of effort. Oh yeah, this is like long. I gotta cut this. Um, it's not like a terrible amount of effort, but definitely can take your tracks to the next level. It's more of one of those things like you gotta think to do it. Um, so let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that's cool. Now, it works a little bit better if you put some reverb on this. Um, so let's do that. Just copy this one over. And we probably need to turn it down a little bit. But there we go. We got a cool little uh, groove going on. Um, cool. So let's start working on this build up. Um, I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna make like some white noise. I may end up using a sample. I know I said I like to do a lot of the sort of effects later, but with this kind of thing, it's important to start now. Um, so we're just gonna make one long note. It doesn't really matter which one it is because it's white noise. Um, make sure this is, hang on, I'm gonna make a new mini clip. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter like which, um, which note you put in for this because you're just making white noise. And I'm actually going to use operator for this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this first oscillator to just be white noise. You can do this in like a lot of synths also. You don't have to use operator. I just use operator because it's Ableton native. Um, so it uses less CPU. And while I'm filming a video, that is a concern of mine. So yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like this sweep here with a band pass filter with a little bit of resonance um a lot of people say use a low pass filter but band pass filter is actually better for white noise sweeps because you get a more full sweep um and yeah it just tends to be like what sounds a little bit better um so we'll just listen to this there's some low end now that we're gonna have to cut out i'll start doing that now just give it to me, baby, baby. Give it to me, baby. Perfect. So we don't want it to um get fully like to the top of the sweep um with this. You want it to get like to about there, because if you get completely up to the top, I'll show you what happens. It gets kind of messy. Um, or it just doesn't sound too good, because the very top of the bandpass sweep. <laughs> You like it's just beyond human hearing. It's like about there is good, maybe like this. I mean, you can just sort of do this to taste. And I think I'm gonna give away. Yeah, okay, about like that is good. I think I'm gonna give away this project file as well, so you'll be able to mess with it on your own time. Um, but cool. So we got that. Um, now we need some like more build up stuff. So I'm gonna get like a snare. Um, and we'll just do like a little snare build real quick. Just something simple. It may not sound super good, but it'll get us there. I'm going to grab something from the Cashmere Volume 2 pack. And I may be talking for nothing. I may end up speeding up this part in case it uh takes too long for me to find a good snare. Alright, we can start with this one. That's good. Um, and... 
This is kind of one of those things where you just have to get creative. I'm just going to make a mini clip that's like the same length as the build. Um, and yeah. Um, not too much to it. You just sort of want to make like a upbeat pattern that builds. And, um, you know, you don't want to just do ch 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 because, I mean, this is like house music. These days, maybe back in like 2013, uh, that was cool. But these days, it's kind of a little bit more funky and a little bit more like interesting. I've also put the same swing that's on all the other s drums, um, on this, which is important because. We got some, uh, some 16th notes. Cool. So, let's, uh, select all of this, actually. Okay, cool. And what I tend to do is just do, like, a two-bar loop. Like this, maybe. Alright, cool. That works. And then after that is when I start doing the the sort of like building snares. Um like this one's gonna be like <laughs> Alright, cool. So already you see like we're building pretty good tension for the uh drop. And something I tend to do also is um, put like the hi-hat build, or the hi-hat loop in like the second half of the build. It's just another thing that can sound kind of cool. Um, so that's about it for the build for now. Obviously want to go back and start adding more effects and sort of like doing more stuff to this track. Um, I'll probably do more. But for now, I'm going to grab the main drums and we're going to start on the drop. Cool. So what I was thinking is it might be kind of cool if I do like this sort of more, um, this sort of house track that's like this. Like, not super deep house, but a little bit deeper house, you know? Um, and then go into, like, a bass house drop. So, not like a bass house, like, super, super hard bass house, but just something a little bit more, um, deep. So let's do that. Um... So I'm starting out, I'm doing on this first little bar here, there's like the, everything cuts out and then the drums come in. That's just a good way to sort of make it like very tense when that moment hits of the drop. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make probably the main bass in Serum right now because I know what I'm going to do. It's going to be pretty simple. So I got two sine waves basically basic shapes and what I'm doing is I'm turning down the level on the second one and we're gonna do FM from B um you know pretty straightforward thing and as you can hear right off the bat it sounds pretty terrible um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to envelope mode actually um and we gotta make it more like a pluck I think we're just gonna do like that keep it on a quarter note and the key here is how much you have this on because you can hear it's sounding quite a bit better now. Cool. Um, um, that's about all I'm going to do on that for now. I might go back and do more to this patch later. I, I probably definitely will, actually. But for now, I just want to get started with, like, s making a bass line. All right, yeah, that works. All right, yeah, it's, you know, we're just sort of messing around here, trying to get a feel for things. The key thing is that we're going to leave these this, 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 and then this bar at the end here open for um other bases. So let's start crafting those. Um...
And I'm actually going to put a side chain on this real quick. And by side chain, I mean an LFO tool. So I'm just going to copy the one from the little vocal thing. Oh, let's copy the vocal thing over too. Because that's kind of essential to this track, I think. Um, okay, yeah, there we go. So. <laughs> Cool. And at the end here where the bass completely cuts out, let's grab this vocal as well. Um Cool. Um so let's make the end of bar or end of like eight bar bass real quick. Um so I'm just gonna get serum again. Oh whoops. And this one will be maybe a little bit harder edge. So we're gonna get like more just still using basic shapes and we're still gonna use FM synthesis, but this time the second one's gonna be a square wave and we're gonna do two octaves and seven semitones up. So let's get FM from B again and we're just gonna make that same kind of like pluck bass envelope mode. Um let's get a filter on this, like a low pass filter. Oh, I gotta go in and do it in the matrix. Um I think I'm going to speed this up, me making this sound, and then we'll come back once I have it. Okay, so, I have the bass sound. It sounds like this. Um, it's, I actually ended up using two sine waves again. Um, but if you notice, I used the sync and put the same LFO on it that has, that is on the FM. Um, and I have a little low pass filter on there too. Yeah, we'll do it like that. Um, and then in the effects, I just have a bit of tube distortion. And then I use the hyper dimension. Um, a hyper dimension can sound kind of bad, and it can sound very good. Um, the key to making it sound very good is not using the hyper. <laughs> um, which, not in every circumstance. Obviously, there's probably some cases where it sounds good. And just using the dimension. Um, similar to the way a lot of people say to use the dimension expander if you're familiar with massive at all. Um, where you just turn the size all the way down and then mess with the mix because you're still getting stereo width added if you hear if I turn it off It's still adding quite a bit when it's on but You don't uh Yeah, you don't get that like Like that that comes when you have it on which can be cool for some sounds, but for this we don't want it Um, so let's draw in a little bass line for the end of the bar here. Um do like no, I'm going to get the uh, notes right here. Cool, that works for me. Um, so I'm going to put the swing on there, same groove that's on everything else. And let's put the LFO tool on there. And the reason I just keep copying the same one over is because it's just, they're all set up the same way. Um, there's not really too much to it. Okay, so we got this. Oh, I want to do like a little... Invert these two notes so it'll go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So let's make some more sort of like beginning of the bar bases and then we'll go on to like the next half of the drop. Um So I'm just gonna make some sounds and then I'll come back and show you what I did. Um cool.
three hours later. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just sort of spruced up like the whole drop, um, all of the bases. So I'll start with well, first off, what I did to the main bass, I've made it a little bit more interesting. Um, so if you look in here, it's the same patch. But I've done a few things. I added the sync on oscillator too. Um, and I've also put this on the level of this one just to keep it a little bit tighter. Um, and then I haven't done anything with effects. But I have added... So, before there was supposed to be a, a new bass, like a new one-shot bass, at every one of these notes. Um, but that just sounded like a little bit too much, kind of like, dubstep -y to me. So instead what I did was I added a note on this, but I did like the little pitch bend, so it goes like pretty nice and then on the second one there's like two notes there um and yeah it's pretty cool now if you'll notice there's a second layer with the same midi clip um i've also made a sub so if you hear this one doesn't have a whole lot of sub bass in it so that's what this one's for and all i've done on that is it's the same side chain um or the same alpha tool i will say um same stuff going on here but it's literally just a sine wave in Serum. Um, if you see, I took the same patch even and just turned off Oscillator 2. Um, and then I put a bit warmer on it because, you know, you thought you got this far in the video without me using it, but you were wrong. Um, <laughs> but for real though, using a bit warmer and like any kind of saturation can really help with your sub to sort of glue it to your main bass. <laughs> Um, so as far as these two one-shot basses, so uh, they're both just kind of like these metallic sounds that I made. Um, the first one I made, it's just this Monster 8 wavetable. It's like one of the ones that come default in Serum. Um, I've just put this little elfo on the level and the wavetable position, and I've put FM on it to this oscillator, which I've done plus two and then plus seven semitones. Um, it's just a saw wave, pretty straightforward. You can see I played around with the reverb filter, but it didn't sound too good. I also put a sub under it, because without it, it's kind of just a little too thin. And the sub kind of helps, um, when the distortion comes in to make it a little bit, like, crunchier and fatter. And it, it just, in general, helps all around. Um, so after that, I put on a distortion. Pretty straightforward, um, but I put the LFO on the mix here, because if you see, if I didn't sounded kind of weird um this way it keeps it like nice and tight um so i'll go ahead and put that back real quick fx distortion wet cool excellent um and then i just have that with the lfo tool sidechain um after that i have this bass which was actually a preset i had previously made um in my user library Let's see sounds different on different notes um and what this is, is I'm pretty sure this is the AI, I don't still have it in here, but luckily it loaded. I'm pretty sure this is the AI oscillator from Massive, um, or the AI wavetable from Massive. Um, and what I have on here is I've got this LFO1, which, okay, so, basically what I'm doing is I have a saw wave, or a triangle wave, excuse me, and I'm FMing it with this, uh, AI oscillator. <laughs> And then on the AI one, I just have bend minus and wavetable position both being modulated by the LFO. Um, and then I have the LFO doing the FM as well, and then on the level of this one. So this is like the main oscillator. This is where all the sound is coming out of, and it's just getting FM by this one. Um, and I have a reverb filter on there. Just adds that kind of reverb filter -ness. Um and I got a few other things on here. So I got the, fil the flange filter just kind of adds that sort of metallicness although I kind of like it without it now that I'm hearing it <laughs> um, and then I have a delay and reverb you know just to give it that kind of like spaciness um, and the serum delay and reverb are very good for that like very like crunchy kind of reverb and delay like you're hearing on this um, then I just have a multiband compressor um, I'll show you without it. So that's what really sort of brings it to life. Um, and yeah, so this is pretty much the drop now. Standard 
and deep house bass. Oh, and the end of bar bass. I'll go over that too. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just make that a standard deep house bass. In the end of bar bass. Um, I actually used a preset for this one. I'm not even gonna lie, but I did change it a little bit. Um, it's from this Future Bounce Bank by Surge Sounds it's called BS Tank. Um, and I'll load up the original one and show you what I did to it. Okay, so this is the original one. And what I did to it, um, well, first off, I turned off the phaser. So that changed the tonality of it quite a bit. Um, and I set the two envelopes differently as well. Um, and this is where, like, using a preset, um, but making your own thing out of it kind of comes into play because what I did was this sound wasn't really, like, tight enough for what I wanted. So what I did was I took the amplitude envelope, turned it down, maybe like that. So it's getting tighter, and then I just messed with the decay of this one, which is the one that's modulating the um something. <laughs> it's modulating something that's important. Um, and yeah, it's like a good way to sort of, like I said, take a sound and or a, a preset and take it into your own hands, you know. Um, and then change the notes a little bit, but most importantly is this end note. The reason why it works so well, in my opinion, it works well, um, is because harmonically it's working with the vocals that are happening there. Because if you listen, I'll play it again. I'll solo this, and I'll solo the, uh, low vocals. That this note ends on the same note as this ends. So it like really kind of ties it all together nicely. Um, and this is by no means like the best house track of all time ever. Um, but I feel like we're definitely getting somewhere here. Um, cool. So I'm gonna make another half of this drop here, and we're just gonna make two more sort of a uh, sort of like one shot bases um this time i'll show you what i'm doing so to make this first one i'm just gonna play around with a few oscillators in here um i like these trilobite ones or trilobite i don't know but they're good for getting the kind of metallic sound i'm going for here so i put an lfo on the wavetable position and i'm gonna put it on the level and i'm gonna turn on the sub oscillator and put it on that as well Alright, we can get something out of this. Um, let's put basic shapes on here and try some FM maybe. Okay. Pitch this up. Maybe like plus two. Yeah, there we go. We can get something. Um, let's put that on there. Cool. We need to turn this down a little bit. We gotta put the side chain on it. Or the side chain um, and that's the thing too is like if you can keep the sounds under control like that they can usually actually just work in your track um that's what i've found cool so let's do some more to this let's put let's try some multiband compression might not work. yeah that's a little Actually, it works. Um, cool. Let's put some reverb before it so we get that nice effect. We gotta make it like a very short reverb though with a little bit of mix. Alright, that's a pretty cool little sound. Um, we can experiment with some filtering maybe just to take it up a notch. Let's try. Actually, let's use the uh, effects filter because. Then I can do a little bit more. Um, but yeah, let's try a low pass filter maybe. Might make it cool. Nah. Um, okay, let's try. Let's do like a peak filter. Because I want to get a little bit of that sort of peak filter valley-ness. Okay, there we go. So you can hear the peak filter. Is adding sort of like a valley overtone. Yeah. 
Now, I didn't end up kind of just like this, how it is, but it's important because <laughs> you could do that if you wanted to. Um, Okay, so let's just make one more little end of bar base here. Or not end of bar base. Um, One more little starter base here, or one shot base. And we will move on to the post drop stuff. All right, cool. So this one's going to be pretty simple. I think I'm just going to use two basic shapes, oscillators, um, and a bit of FM. And it shouldn't be too much. Um, so we're going to use a square wave on this one, and a sine wave on this one that's up two octaves and seven semitones. Now this seven semitones trick with the FM in general is not really talked about too much. I'm finding... When you can hear it, it sounds really cool. Like if I just set this to two set two octaves, it wouldn't quite have that same uh, feel. Now, the key to this sound is gonna be like is gonna be uh, actually sort of making like this is gonna be sort of like concept of FM synthesis as well as subtractive synthesis because. FM synthesis is obviously using frequency modulation. We've already done that with these two. Um, I'm going to try. Nah. Alright, there we go. Uh, but we're also going to use subtractive synthesis because if you hear, we've made a very harmonically rich sound. Um, and I want to try taking away some of those frequencies with a low pass filter um, and sort of doing some stuff with this LFO to. Uh, yeah, like that. Um, to make it interesting again. And that's the concept of subtractive synthesis. If you're familiar with it, or if you're not familiar with it. The idea behind subtractive synthesis is you start with a very harmonically rich sound and you take away harmonics using filtering. Now that doesn't have to just be a low pass filter, that could be a high pass filter, which is obviously taking away like low end or low harmonics. Um, but the idea is just getting rid of stuff um, and subtracting. Um, so we're just sort of going away at this. All right, that's cool. So yeah, just like a simple FM sound. Um, and at the end here, we're going to get rid of that stuff because what we're going to do instead is we're going to get the arpeggio that we had. Um, and we're just going to take the end of that. And we're going to get a respace from the intro as, or not from our, the intro, but from the sort of like beginning as well. Um, and I'm just going to copy that over because I want to get these notes. We're just going to do like one for every quarter note here. Because this is just going to be a little short part. And that may not work, but let's see if it works. Oh, okay, cool. And we got to um turn this bass up. Cool. Let's copy over the drums. Um, Except this time. Well, let's just copy over this part. Okay, cool. And then we're going to do like maybe maybe an eight bar part with this um after the drop. Cool. Um, and we can get the arpeggio from here. We can get the, uh, I don't know why I really have these markers. They're not really necessary at this point. Let me just get rid of them. Um, we can get that, and then we can get the respace from here. And we are going to put another LFO tool. Well, first off, we got to have the LFO tool automate back on again for this thing, this arpeggio. Because if you remember, we had that so that we can get, we can get that, uh, sort of, Side chain. We also need to copy over the vocal thing, um, the little that thing that's been going through the whole track. We got to get a side chain on the bass. Um, so I'm just gonna copy the one from the arpeggio, um, so that we can have a nice side chained bass. Um, cool. Let's hear that now. And I'm going to grab this stuff too, like the vocal. Um, I might put that vocal reverse into this part as well, but... Okay, 
Okay, so this um vocal is sounding a little bit too like on the beat for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get actually I'll just do it with all three of these layers because they all need to be delayed the same amount. I'm gonna use this track delay, which you get by pressing D down this little D down here. Um and what you can do with track delay is if I can get these I'm not sure if I can do them all at the same time. I don't think I can. But that's fine. Um you just start with like thirty milliseconds of it. Essentially what track delay does is it's the same exact thing as if you just zoomed in and moved this forward like that. Um, but it's a little bit more controllable this way. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to make it sort of ride the groove a little bit. It's going to be a little bit moved backward. Um, and it's just going to ride the groove a little bit better. So let's uh, take out the kick at the end there. And as you can hear, we're ready for another breakdown into a build. So here, by now, it's going to be quite boring to hear this. Uh, this vocal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some vocal, some chopped up vocals. Um, I'm gonna keep this reverse going in here because that's gonna be perfect because we can get the. Uh, it'll be going out of a part where like you haven't heard the vocals. I'll explain in a second. Um, like it'll be like in this eight bars you're hearing these vocal chops. So then when you hear this, hey, you're like, oh, I'm gonna go back into the vocals. Um, so we're gonna delay this forward just the same amount we did the other ones. And on these vocal chops, um, the key is to just sort of play around, I guess. I mean, you don't really want to, uh, yeah, there's not really too much to, uh, really say about these as much as it is to just sort of give it a shot and try to do stuff. Now, I have a few ideas going in. But, um, yeah. It's a little hard to talk while I'm doing this. Um, but let's just sort of... Okay, we can grab like this part for this little end in here. Um, I usually what I tend to do is make like a little two bar loop and then duplicate it and change up the end somehow. Um, so to do that here, I'm just gonna grab like random parts of this. And that's a fun way to do it as well because you sort of like, you get things you wouldn't expect doing it randomly like this. Alright, so let's hear this. Alright, that's cool. I'm good with that. Um, let's put it up in octave. So minus three. Um, so we'll do one, two, three, four. F oh, whoops. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> Now, obviously, the chipmunk vocal's not really the best, so we're gonna put it on Complex Pro, and we're gonna start messing with the form. And that gives us, like, a nicer sort of, a uh, thing to work with. So, first thing I'm gonna do on this, as far as processing goes, is I'm gonna just put on an LFO tool, um, because I like to have this sort of pumping effect. Um, then I'm gonna put this the hub into this very long. Oh, I'm gonna put the auto tune from this as well on here. Um, and I'm gonna put that before everything. So I'm just copying it, holding down control, and then clicking and dragging it onto here. Just to make sure it's in tune the whole time. And it's cool because we're getting like percussion from this art because it's like I was saying. It's like this patch with the uh, third oscillator adds like sort of some white noise-ish frequencies to it, which give us that sound. Um, 
So, I wonder how long I've been going on for here. Oh, nice. An hour. All right, pretty solid. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna put some overdrive on here. I like the sort of my vocal chops. And yeah. Cool, so we got a nice little part there. Um, now we're gonna extend this build for the second build up because obviously. You don't want it to just be like a carbon copy of the first one, because that's just kind of boring. Um, instead, we're going to make it twice as long, I think. Or maybe like one and a half times as long <laughs> um, is probably a better thing to do. Um, so let's just get all this stuff and drag it over. This is like the kind of boring part of this is like <laughs> trying to, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Alright, so let's do this. So. I'm going to get this base, duplicate that over like that. Um, make sure the okay, cool. So we've got oh, we gotta make this um okay, we gotta make this mini clip longer. So I'm just selecting how long I want it to be and hitting Control J. And same thing with this white noise. Um, and then what we're gonna do is lengthen that mini note, and we'll go into the operator, filter frequency automation. So we're just controlling that. Cool. Oh, I gotta duplicate over all this stuff. Whoops. Um. So, I'm thinking for this, like, little part of this build here, I'm going to get something that's, like, since she says the word baby so many times. Like that. I'm going to grab uh, her saying that and use that for the, like, build here. Um, so that's, that's that. Cool. We got that, and I mean, this kind of like depends on what song you're working on, you know, because obviously different songs, they say different things. Um, I'm gonna grab all the vocal processing, and we'll delay this one 40 milliseconds, just like the other one. Uh, all right, cool. Yeah, it's not like the best vocal buildup of all time <laughs> but i mean you know we're doing something with it um okay so let's get this sort of like this like uh snare build going so this one we can do like a little bit longer like because we have obviously a little bit more time to work with um Alright, cool. So, I'm just gonna do, like, simple 16th notes, and definitely if this was, like, a track I was planning on releasing, obviously I would spend a bit more time on this, but I'm really just trying to make this tutorial to show you sort of, like, how to go from point A to point B, you know? Um... <laughs> Okay, no, that sounds weird. <laughs> um, let's just do this. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll just do like the 16 notes for the last bar. Okay. <laughs> So, um, we can grab this, the hook again for this part right before the drop because obviously we want 
something in this little part. So as far as the second drop goes, I mean, you know, it's fun to do, I'll do like a little part here where like I'm going to cut out all this stuff. Um, it's kind of like, you just want to switch it up a little bit so it's not exactly the same drop as what everybody just heard, but it's not like too different, you know? Like if I went completely like full melodic future house with this, it would sound weird. Babe. sort of switch it up a little bit more um now in the interest of time i'm gonna go so this isn't like too long of a video i'm gonna go ahead and start adding some effects into here and getting the arrangement more filled out in that sense um and yeah we can just sort of play around um so the first thing that we need the way i like to do this is like okay you need to have them for the full track obviously so i usually just go from the start of the song and listen and be like okay this part needs like a crash. This part needs like whatever white noise, like, and just sort of go through and do it. Um, so right off the bat at the start, we need some kind of a crash. So I'm gonna grab a symbol from Cashmere. I'm just gonna grab this first crash. Um, and we'll have that. We'll just turn down the volume a little bit, and then I'm gonna put LFO tool on it, same one that's on like everything else. And there we go. We got a nice little crash in the beginning. Alright, so we're listening through, and right here obviously we don't really need anything, um, but maybe here we could put something in that would be cool, and it doesn't have to be a crash either, like um, we could go in here and grab, there's like, um, I'm using the cashmere pack as a good example because it's sort of like all encompassing and has a lot of stuff, um, but you can definitely use like whatever you want, um, but I'm going to take this little vocal reverse. Actually, let's grab one we can pitch up. Alright, this one's pretty good. Um, let's put it up one semitone because it's an F and we got to be an F sharp. Um, make sure. You want to make sure because sometimes these samples, there will be like, oh, whoops, a little bit of space in there and you don't want that. But this one goes straight out to the end, so it's good. I'm going to copy over the um, LFO tool. And I'm going to put a bit of reverb on here. Because I'm not going to put a crash on this on bar 9 here. I'm just going to have this go up. And a good way to do that is to have reverb. Because then it goes into there. I'll show you what I mean. Hmm. I think a different one would sound a little better. I think I am going to grab this one and pitch it down. Or perhaps... No, let's just grab this one. Okay, so this is an A. So let's do G sharp, G, F sharp. Yeah, see, we're not going to put like a crash here. So having this reverb tail going into there really helps. I'm going to turn the decay up a little bit on the reverb. Excellent. Um, there's not really too much else that we need going into the end here. But what we do need is a bit of a transition at the end of this drop. Or at the end of this sort of intro. Um, so there's a lot of ways you can go about doing that. But I kind of already know what I want to do. Um, and what I want to do is I want a reverse crash. So let's grab one of these cashmere ones. Um, and again, you don't have to use cashmere samples. Maybe some people will be like, oh, why aren't you forging your own out of the fires of Mordor? Mordor. But um, for me, they're just sort of like the best quality samples. And there's a lot of like volume in one place. So I'm adding this, I added this reverse crash. I just took this crash in here. I kept it warped um, so that it would fit the perfect four bars that it goes out for. And then um, I reversed it. Maybe I said reverse it. I don't know. It's late. It's like 1.28 a.m. But um, I put this reverb on. I just copied the one from this just to make it easy on myself. Um, and then turn the decay down. And then I put the LFO tool on there so it'll like pump with the beat. 
Cool. And then we get that. So after that, we need some kind of an impact. Um, and luckily, we can put one together using a few different sources. So typically what I like to do is have a little sweep. It's like you can hear how these have like a sweep. Um, and then like a high-end one and a low-end one. Now we don't need a sweep, I don't think. Because we have all of this stuff from the uh, other ones. But we do need to layer a few of these impacts together. Now this impact has a little bit of low end. But that tends to get lost a lot in the track. Um, so if I play it. I guess it's alright. But definitely could use a little bit under it perhaps. Um, so I'm going to go into here. This in this orchestral drums. There's this deep impact that I like to use for this. And this just sits really nicely like underneath sort of a more like high end one. Or one that has more high end in it. Give it to, me, baby, baby. to just pump it up a little bit more. Um, now over top of that, we're just going to put one more layer. I'm going to get one of these white noise exhausts that they have in here. Um, and we're going to unwarp it. You notice I'm unwarping all these effects. You don't want these kinds of things to be warped. This crash is different because you need it to be a certain length. Anything that you're reversing, it can be warped. Um, but as far as like this crash and like these, you don't want them to be warped because it messes with the transients. It makes the sound playback weird. Just in general, it's not good. Um, okay, so Listening, listening for where we need a fact. I would probably put one here, but we have this little vocal reverse that is uh, doing it just fine. And also, if you notice, I'm putting all my effects along the bottom. I may have already mentioned this, but I really like to do that because, like, if I had these all peppered in throughout the track, like, in different spots, it can get kind of messy. You see, like, even with these one-shot basses, when you just have, like, these little sounds that you just hear one time in the track and then they're like sort of done uh it can really get messy so we don't want to do that so i like to just put it all on the bottom and just that's sort of like the effects dungeon um so one thing this build could use is like a pitch riser um so let's get one um, and I'm actually going to make one using Serum, and it's really not too difficult. Um, key is, you see I just turned on the volume. I'm doing that on everything. We're trying to keep the levels up. Keep, keep going around maybe like minus four to s minus six. For right now, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, so I like to start with a, um, like a pretty low square or saw wave. Um, and then what you do is you turn this bend up so it can go up to 24 semitones um and then you hit configure you have to configure this because i know you can do the thing where you just like touch this and it'll show up in your automation over here but um if you do that at some point it'll become disabled oh whoops and it'll become a giant mess to get it back to normal so what you want to do is just have this pitch up and the key is to make it sound like it's going forever so similar to what i did with the operator i'm ending it here instead of right up here because I want it to not end perfectly on the end of the thing. Um, and you definitely don't want it to be like max out. Like you want it to keep going over the whole build. So let's see how that's Okay, so we gotta pitch this up a little bit. Yeah, now I'm gonna put a utility on here. And do a little bit of a volume thing, like for the first half where it builds up. These kind of sounds tend to be a little better when you look at the Cool. Now, we can do a few things to process this. The first thing I like to do is do a lot of units. But yeah, 
yeah. Um, now, I mean, that's pretty much all we really need for the build. I know people will, like, tell you you need a whole lot of stuff, but it's really best to just use only what you really, really need. Um, and that's all we really, really need. We're building plenty of tension this way. Um, so now we're on to the drop. So, as far as effects go in the drop, um, I'm gonna reuse this crash from the beginning, because what I like to do is have, so there's, like, the little first beat where it just goes, Womp, and then the bass comes in, so I want to be like, like that. that makes a nice effect. Um, and then what I usually just do is then in the second half, I have like a different effect. So like I'll get maybe one of these exhausts. Um, I put that on there. I don't know where am I. Okay, on this track. Um, and then do the same thing, just put it on the two there, and unwarp it, make sure it's all good, and then we'll play. Yeah, there we go, that's all you really need. And I'm putting it on the same track to, um, to, or because of the fact that, um, this just has that LFO tool on there. Um, cool, so now at the end here, I'm gonna recycle this crash from the beginning. <laughs> Cool. Now, we need another, like, crash on the, uh, downbeat here. So let's just grab, like, this one and put it on this track where we have all these other ones. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. So we need some stuff here, um, like an impact with some kind of sweep. So let's grab one. Um, and I may just use like an impact and I may use a few layers to make one. Um. Okay, so let's get like this one perhaps. Um, I might grab a different one. I don't know. I'm just getting a feel for it. And we're putting it on a new track. And the key here is to see where the um, transient is for this, like, impact for the actual hit. And just line that up perfectly. Um, and then you have the sweep. And you have to keep it unwarped because it was like I was saying. It's like you don't want these to be warped. It's just going to mess with it. Okay, so that's not the best one because the sweep is very short on that one. Um... Most of these have a pretty short sweep. So let's get another reverse crash for here. Um, and I'll put it on the same track that had the other one. And we'll just use an impact there. Um, let's get symbols. Let's do. Okay, let's grab this one. Haven't touched this one yet, I don't think. Just give it to me, baby. We need some kind of an impact for this. So let's see. Have I used this track? Okay. I have not. So let's just grab one out of the effects elements. And we'll make this one be like our sort of high end of this impact. And then we're going to use a sub drop. Um, which is also something if you have the cashmere packs. That they have quite a bit. Um, but these can be good for parts like this. It might clash with the bass. It might not though. So let's see. Yeah, okay, that doesn't sound too good. Okay, so we may just want to use this impact. So I've recycled that layered impact that we had in the intro. Um... And I just have it in this sort of build up here. Um, yeah. Now we just gotta listen through. We gotta put this uh, pitch riser in the drop again, which isn't too, or in the build up again, which isn't too hard. We just have to accommodate this one to the new part. So, what we're gonna do is we already just lengthened out the note there. I'm gonna make sure. Okay, I still want the same length of the build of the gain on the utility but now we got to get this pitch automation um and drag it over so it goes across this whole thing and doesn't just tap out at some point um, 
Minus five, minus four, minus six, around like that range. Um, while I'm working on it, and as far as the drop goes, I mean, we can pretty much recycle the same effects from the intro or from the original drop. Um, no hate, please. Some people may not like that, but um, yeah. So we can just take them and sort of accommodate them to this. like one for this sort of build up part here um let's grab this one and then we'll get like another one for the end like this one and then let's recycle this impact one more time for the end so it'll be like Just give it to me, baby, baby. And there we go now we're pretty much almost done here now obviously this isn't like really done because i haven't taken a lot of time to like think about it or like just really like digest what i've just made or anything or even like change up the second drop too much um but i wanted to give you the basic skeleton for what to do um and yeah now i'm gonna do a few more things to this though first thing that i'm gonna do um is i'm going to how long is this oh, okay it's not too bad I could do like a drum outro, but I'm not necessarily making a club mix out of this, so I'm not going to. And I'm going to put an EQ on the master. Now, that's probably going to be like, Julian, what are you doing? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on band one and turn the frequency down all the way. Um, and we're going to set it to this like X4 thing. And what we're going to do is on the builds, we're going to sweep it up. Um, so it's going to go up to like a certain frequency. Maybe around there is probably too much, but I'll still keep it because that's just how it is, I guess. And then we're going to sweep it back down at the end of the build during this little part smoothly. Because if we do it quickly, you hear a click and it's not good. So you have to make it like smooth. Um, and what that's going to do if you look at it. cuts out the bass right before the drop so that way when the drop hits and you hear the bass in that for the first time you're like oh this is like it's a lot harder so I just copy that over to this part and you don't want to do it too much because it can sound like the key is to make it as like not obvious as possible um and that's what I've done pretty much so I'm gonna listen to this. I want to see what the meter is doing that for, uh, this thing pretty good track here um so i think that's pretty much going to conclude this um i didn't want to cover mastering too much in this video or at all <laughs> i guess um i really just want to show you how to sort of start from like go from point a to point b or point a to point z in this case um and hopefully make at least something resembling a finished track that's like pretty interesting and um has one cohesive idea throughout so yeah, if you like this video, subscribe, um, follow me, go check out my new sample pack, it's in the description, I just dropped House Music Volume 3, um, the first two did very well, so figured I'd make a new one, um, and yeah, thank you so much everybody, um, peace.